The transit of Venus occurs when Venus passes directly between the Earth and the Sun. This is observed as a dark spot passing over the bright disk of the Sun. Now, the transit of Venus is a relatively rare event because the orbits of Venus and the Earth are inclined with respect to each other. The next transit of Venus will occur at the beginning of June 2012. Now, it's not just the rarity of this event that makes this scientifically interesting. In the past, scientists have used the transit of Venus to answer a fundamental question. What is the distance between the Earth and the Sun? Now, in the early 1600s, Kepler had already been able to figure out the relative distances between the planets. But he still didn't know what the actual absolute distance was between the Earth and the Sun. So he didn't know what the size of the solar system was. And it wasn't until the early 1700s when an astronomer named Halley was able to figure out how to do this. He sent two groups of astronomers to two different locations widely separated on the Earth. I'm going to call these locations A and B. And they both observed the transit of Venus, denoted here as a dot labeled V, on the surface of the Sun, A prime and B prime. By measuring this angular separation, they would be able to determine theta. And then by using geometry and trigonometry, they would be able to get the distance between the Earth and Venus, D. Since they already knew the relative distances between all of the planets, they would then be able to determine the distance between the Sun and the Earth. I've called that x. But it was a little bit trickier than that. Because I've shown this diagram greatly exaggerated, the separation between A prime and B prime was actually very small. And it was very difficult to make an accurate observation between these A prime and B prime. So instead, they measured the difference in the timing of the transit of Venus across the face of the Sun, which they were able to do relatively accurately. And by using Pythagorean's theorem, they were then able to determine theta. Once they had theta, they could then determine d, the distance between the Earth and Venus, and then determine the absolute distance between the Earth and the Sun, and then get the entire size of the solar system. And with this technique, the measurement that they came up with was only 3% off of the current measurement of the Earth, of the distance between the Earth and the Sun.